We're cracking open a big bottle of Spaceballs beer today. Oh, what? Be going down, people of the world. My name is Redbeard, and this is a daily drink vlog for the beer of the today. We've got a bottle of Dark Helmet Imperious Schwartz beer by the Bozal Natural Brewing Company. Hell yes. That's that's the giant ship that went to ludicrous speed. Ah, uh, I'm really not sure what kind of beer. I think I had some kind of a Schwartz beer not too long ago. I think it was my first one ever. So I, I really don't remember or know what to expect at all. So let's crack her open and see what we have got. Yes, that's that's definitely a little on the dark side, a little bit. Let's get some head on there. Hey, pour nice for me. Pour nice. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Don't go over. For fuck's sakes. I just kind of cheated. It's not bad though. As always, all the thanks in the whole wide world. For those who watch my videos, the beard loves you all so very, 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 very much. Yeah, a little on the dark side. Ha, get it? The dark side? Even though it wasn't a thing that happened in that movie? It was a parody of Star Wars, and Star Wars had the dark side. I already kind of tried this, it was alright. Didn't really get the aroma. Smoky, roasty, coffee, chocolatey kind of hints. It smells good. The taste I got was head, so it wasn't, you know, accurate. So let, let's give her an actual shot after I get the hair that is floating around my eyeball. That is bloody delicious. Oh my god. It almost tastes like some kind of a chocolate milk stout. I like it a lot. Let's do this. Cheers, everybody. That is really, really easy drinking Schwartz beer. Oh. Yeah, I think I can probably get the rest. Maybe? The last little bit in there? Come on. Come on. Yes. And we'll do we'll do the, the bottle read a little early this time, even though I I have my little card thing to read, so I'm just checking out the bottle right now. Fucking hairs everywhere, my god. It's of 7.3%. It does not taste like it's 7.3%. Ingredients are local spring water, organic barley malts, organic hops, and brewer's yeast. And that's we have a date, we have ingredients, so that's that's good. Yeah, Bose isn't really good for putting a lot of stuff on their label, but generally when you buy their beer, it'll have like a tag on it, or this was part of a four-pack, and if you buy a four-pack, it comes with a little card, which I will read quite quite soon. Today being... blah 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 blah. Today being January 20th, on this date 1929, in old Arizona, the first full-length talking motion picture filmed outdoors was released. Yeah. I just read it the way it was, and I maybe enunciated wrong. In old Arizona, comma, the first full-length talking motion picture filmed outdoors, comma, was released. So the picture was called in old Arizona. Yeah, kind of misleading the way it's, it says that. This beer has a really nice-looking head. You see that? You see the head? You can't even really see the head. There you go. Maybe right there. Maybe. 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 Possibly. Yep. Good times. Oh, it's, it's delicious. It's really, really nice. And it really does have a lot of similarities to, say, like a chocolate milk stout. But it's obviously a Schwartz beer. I wish I had power over the Schwartz. Use the Schwartz. 
get taught by a little guy named Yogurt. That'd be awesome. Good times. My best friend could be named Barf. The movie was a little ridiculous. On this date in 1937, Franklin D. Roosevelt and John Nance Garner were sworn in for their second terms as U.S. President and Vice President. The first time it happened on January 20th, following the ratification of the 20th Amendment. I guess before it used to take place in March or something. Hmm. Doesn't really affect me at all. A lot of the stuff I read about the states and shit. Just most of... I'm not going to say most world history, but a lot of significant kind of events happen there. A lot. Even though a lot of them aren't good events, they're still significant. Mm. This beer is significantly delicious. Let's read this now. Dark Helmet is an extra strong version of a German black lager. Okay. It displays a mellow roasted character that is juxtaposed with the enjoyable lager crispness. It has refined mocha inflections and surprisingly subtle roasted flavor for a beer as dark as the furthest reaches of the galaxy. Ooh, witty. Malt depth's melt depth maintains a pleasant balance and keeps the bigger alcohol present nicely integrated. I'd say it fucking keeps it nicely hidden, if anything. Because you'd never know that was that big of a beer. Like, you drink it and be like, yeah, that maybe like six, you know, a little bit strong, but not almost seven and a half. It's impressive. Yeah. Probably a lot more impressive than one of the other beers that was in this particular four-pack called Quads and Rockers, which is a Belgian quadruple at, I believe, something in the 10 percent range just the tiniest bit terrified of that beer fucking yeast on this date in 1986 for the first time Martin Luther King Jr. Day was celebrated as a federal holiday and also it was celebrated on the 20th as of 1992 I believe when President George H.W. Bush proclaim that it would be on the third Monday of every January because it became a federal holiday. It makes sense. Even though it being on the 20th is kind of weird. His birthday was on the 15th, so you'd think it would have always been on the 15th. But putting it on a Monday makes sense because as a, fe as a federal holiday, you want it to fall after the weekend, not just randomly in the middle of the week, you know, different times every year kind of shit. It's understandable. I think Christmas is probably one of the only holidays. St. Patrick's Day, I believe, is always March 17th, I think. But Christmas is always the 25th, so that can fall wherever. But a lot of holidays are, like Thanksgiving, I believe, is always on a Monday. There's, uh, yeah, weirdness that they do and stuff. Just my goddamn eye. Jesus! Yeah. If you can find some of this, and you like dark lager, stout kind of flavors, get on that. Because that's, that's what you get. Dark lager, stouty flavors. Delicious, delicious flavors. Vogue's overall just is one of, easily one of the biggest brewers, craft brewers probably in Canada. They're pretty huge, but they also, I don't know, they're just a really cool brewery. Like all the organic stuff, even though that doesn't mean that damn thing to me. I don't care if it's organic or if it's not. That, that's, I, I'm pretty sure that if somebody made this exact same beer, with non-organic ingredients, the taste wouldn't be that different. But regardless, good for them. For Organic is, I guess, a little bit more environmentally friendly. 
way of farming, so I can't knock them for that. But they make a lot of different beers, and I gotta say, most. I'm like looking, at, I got a bit of a collection up there. I'm a pretty big fan of most of their beers. This is like for what it is and how strong it is. This is probably one of my favorite Bose beers right here. Not gonna lie, it's really good. Again, like a lot of the beers I drink here, it's one that maybe should be drank a little bit more slowly. You know, take your time, enjoy it. Like I've said a few times, I'm the only YouTube beer reviewer that I've seen, that I've found, that actually goes from start to finish with every single one. Except the goddamn bottle of Singularity. God damn you, Singularity. We will meet again. And I will beat you. Or, actually, I'll probably get beaten again. Russian Imperial Stouts are scary. A whole lot of the scary. On this date, 1991, Sudan's government imposes Islamic law nationwide, very much worsening a civil war that was being fought between the country's Muslim and North Muslim North and Christian South population. Yeah. So the Muslim North was always like, yeah, our incredibly fucked up laws are all actual laws now, like. You ever look into some of that stuff? It's it's so, so not cool. Like, women are basically just garbage. Like, did you fucking... Oh, you, oh, my wife? She did something I didn't like? I'll just kill her. That's justified. Yeah. Islamic law. Fucked. If you think the world... That's it, I, I, I don't want to confuse it with... If, if it's the same... Shaira law. That might be what I'm thinking of, but they might be the same. So, if I'm wrong, then sorry, and if I'm right, then fuck your horrible religion. Fuck all the religions, really. Like, which one's right? No one knows. Probably none of them. This. This is right. Pray to the beer gods. Bose. Bose has at least a couple beer gods in their employ. I'm pretty sure. Okay, this last fact I actually need to quickly, quickly, as soon as I found my mouse cursor, there it is. Okay, kaplow and uh, kaplow, right? There it goes. Okay. The Wikipedia fact for finally on this date 2007, a three-man team using only skis and kites completed a 1,093-mile, which equals 1,710 kilometer, trek to reach the Southern Pole of inaccessibility for the first time since 1958 and for the first time ever without mechanical assistance, like any kind of vehicular device. So, that's what it says under the date. When we actually click on the Southern Pole of inaccessibility to look up what it is, what it is, is like there's the South Pole, the actual magnetic South Pole, and then the South Pole of inaccessibility is the point in Ant in Ant blah, blah, blah. the point of Antarctica that is the furthest away from any water, basically, like the hardest part to get to. There's every continent has a pole of inaccessibility, and actually the oceans do as well. It's kinda neat. But when you look it up actually on that site, it says that on the 4th of December 2006, that's when they actually left. So it took them uh, December to January 20th. It, it took about over a month. But still, it says it consisted of Henry Cookson, Rupert Longsden, Rory Sweet, and Paul Landry. That is not a three-man team. That is four people. It just seems weird. 
Apparently, at the actual southern point of inaccessibility, there is a Russian building that was constructed way back in the day, in like the 40s or something, and it has like a statue of Lenin on it, and there's like a guest book that you can sign, but when these guys reached it, they reported that they, all you could see was like the top of the building because everything else was covered in snow. So I don't know how you get in there to sign, that, sign the guest book. Excuse me. Yeah, pretty interesting. Final fact. Poles and inaccessibility. If you didn't know they were a thing, then we can be enlightened together. I didn't know they were a thing. Drink number for the last. Bose. Your Dark Helmet Imperious Schwartz beer. Like, I'm pretty sure if I actually took the time to sit down and drink a bottle, I'm going to do it. Even though it means I have to buy another bottle of that Quads and Rocker stuff. Because it's a four pack. Sell this on its own. Anyway. Yeah. That is a fucking 10. Yes. For it being 7.3%, that was astonishing. Big fan. And that's going to do it for today's Daily Drink Vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then be sure to smash that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then be sure to smash that subscribe button. If you've got some saving, then put some comments in the box down below. But thanks again, and I'll be back with another Daily Drink Vlog tomorrow. A peace out! Yeah, like I said a couple days ago, I've got that weird, scary stack. 10-ish percent Belgian quad. I have that Belgian quad. I think Marcel may have recently given me a couple Belgian beers. And... God damn the yeastiness.